Right, hello everybody. I'm Nicolas. I'm here to talk to you about scheduled tasks and how to automate your Joomla site yourself. So the big topic is Joomla automation. What is automation? It's basically the automatically controlled operation of an apparatus, process, or system by mechanical electronic devices that take the place of human labor. So basically, we're here to talk about how we can get the computer, your site server, do work for you so you can do literally anything else. And more specifically, we're talking about Joomla automation. So let's see what kind of war your site can do for you. For example, you can remove unnecessary users, like people who registered but never uh, uh, got the email or acted upon the email to enter their registration information. You can take backups automatically, of course, because backups are not really useful unless they are automated. You could receive and send emails for your help desk component. You could even automatically move or archive articles after a while. When you have the computer do the work for you, sky's the limit. If you can imagine it and there is code to do it, then you can automate it. Zoom automation in particular is not something new. It's something that has been around for quite a while, for at least as long as Joomla has existed, or maybe, let's say, since Joomla 1.5, because in 1.0, things were kind of iffy. Uh, there were different automation methods before Joomla 4. You could have CLI scripts that you had to manually schedule in your hosting environment. There were cron URLs, which is kind of a misnomer. Basically, they were URLs that would execute a series of actions for you, but you needed an external trigger to, to make them run. And uh, some extensions, like mine, Akiva Backup, had bespoke APIs, so third-party software or services could use them to perform the automation. So let's spend a little bit of time to understand what these methods were what were their pros, and more importantly, what were their cons, why uh, they might not be the best thing. CLI scripts are fast because you don't have to load the entire web server. You just load a little bit of Joomla, just enough to get the work done. They can be automated with real cron jobs on the server, which means that uh, even if you are self-hosting, if you're running your own server, you can uh, uh, use the cron tab to automate them. However, to do that, you would need to find the path to the PHP CLI binary, which might not always be easy to find or might be a bit confusing even for some of the hosts first level of support. You would need to find the path to the script file, the .php file that you need to run you would have to provide configuration arguments to that PHP file, which could be a bit confusing since there was really no standard to do that. Some hosts wouldn't even do real cron jobs like OVH, and they still cannot do real cron jobs. And if you ask them, they will tell you, no, we, we're not doing that. Because apparently, while the rest of us live in 2023, they live in, uh, I don't know, 1993 perhaps. And also, CLI scripts are hard to reschedule because you would have to go back and look at all the CLI scripts that you have scheduled and try to figure out which is the one that you want to modify, when was it scheduled for, and basically just redo the scheduling. So they're really powerful, but very hard. The other option was to have cron URLs. Um, the basic, the most important pro of this uh, method is that it's just a standard URL that you can, uh, that you're already familiar with and you can use with whatever have you. Uh, typically, the configuration of what they do is inside the component or plugin or module that provides them, not in the URL parameters, which means that you have a nice, more user-friendly way to configure them. However, 
you still need to set up a cron job with uh, the command line programs wget or curl to, to access them unless your uh, your hosting company has a different way to do that. And this can get a bit complicated to, to figure out because you need to figure out the syntax of those tools. Uh, if you try to use a third party service like WebCron, it costs money every time you, you execute the cron job, every time you access that URL, uh, which can get pretty expensive if you need to do something very often. And it can also obscure the source of action, which means that at some point you might forget that you had set up something in WebCron and something is running on your site. You don't know where it's coming from. You look all around your hosting environment, you cannot find it. And you're like, why is it running by itself? How is it possible? And believe me, we had our fair share of confused users over the years who did exactly that. And of course, they are slower because you need to load the entire web server and most of Joomla to get to the point where the URL can do anything else. And since it's running in a web server, it is also affected by the different timeouts that you can have. PHP itself, the web server, and even the timeouts that are set up by the, the host for each process that runs on it. And finally, they can have an adverse interaction with third-party extensions, which is to say that some plugins may screw up the URL. When you try to access a, a URL that does something, a third-party plugin may assume that it uh, it is uh, the site is trying to display an HTML page and act accordingly and everything is broken and you're left with holding the, the two broken pieces, basically. This is why some third-party extensions, like mine, came up with bespoke APIs, either implemented by themselves or in the early days of Joomla 4 implemented uh, through the Joomla API application itself. Bespoke APIs are fast because you only load a minimal amount of Joomla to do that, still through the web server though. There is no need to have cron set up on the server itself since these custom APIs are going to be accessed by um, other uh, software or services. They can offer features beyond mere scheduling of actions, but they need some specially designed software to talk to these APIs or a specially designed service, which can make automation either complicated or expensive. And just like web Chrome URLs, the source of action is obscured because if you have a third party service, let's say taking backups on your site, you might end up forgetting that it is doing that, especially if it only happens like once a month. Trying to solve that problem, Joomla since version 4.0 came up with something called Joomla scheduled tasks which is automation that is handled by Joomla. What exactly is handled by, by Joomla? What, when, and whether to run. It is just records in Joomla's database that you can manage through Joomla's web interface. It also allows you to configure what its task does, not only when and whether it runs. Therefore, it provides you a very nice user-friendly interface to configure even the most complicated of the automation. You can get success and failure emails, so you know if something didn't go according to plan, so you can uh, go back and fix it on your site. And it also supports special tasks. Right now, these are either one-off tasks, something that you're only going to run once, or tasks that will only run if you trigger scheduled tasks through the CLI. This is a bit backwards. Uh, we're going to see what that means in just a little bit. The problem, the only problem with scheduled tasks is that it needs something to tell it to run. It needs a triggering method. And that's because sites do not run by themselves, right? Uh, when you visit a site, you have your browser send a request to the web server and the web server responds to that. 
So if we want tasks to run automatically, something needs to tell them to run. So we need to set up the trigger. Unfortunately, Joomla's documentation is still non-existing on, on the subject, even though it's been an entire two years since this feature was introduced. And fortunately, I have written documentation of my own because my clients need to use scheduled tasks and I just couldn't wait for, I don't know, a decade for Joomla to come up with documentation. Nobody knows. Um, so there are three different triggering methods for Joomla scheduled tasks. The first method is our old friend, the cron jobs, right? However, unlike regular cron jobs for automation, you only need to set up one cron job for Joomla. One cron job, cron job which runs every minute and processes what Joomla calls the tasks queue, which is a fancy way of saying, do I have anything to run what it is? You can optionally have cron jobs to run just a specific task at a specific date and time. However, I do not recommend this because if you're going to do that, why not just use the regular cron jobs that have existed for the past 15 years, right? This is the fastest and most resilient method and it requires the minimum amount of maintenance. If you manage to set it up once, it will continue chugging along pretty much forever or at the very least until you need to upgrade PHP. In which case, you just go to your, uh, to your host's interface for the cron jobs and just change the, the command there to use the new PHP version. The only drawback of this method is that it still, require to, uh, it still requires you to set up a cron job, which may not be possible for some hosts and some users may fight, find a bit challenging. However, there is, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, however, if you are going to set this up, the command that you're going to use is basically the path to PHP, path to your site, CLI, Joomla PHP, that's uh, Joomla's web application. And then you tell it scheduler colon run dash dash all. This basically tells the Joomla CLI application, run the scheduler run command, which is built into Joomla uh, and processes the task queue, tasks queue and process all the tasks that exist. So the path to PHP and the path to your site is something that uh, you will need to figure out. Your host should be able to very easily provide that because it's literally their job that you're paying them for. Um, if you follow this method, remember that you need to set up a cron job to run every minute. The second triggering method is web cron, basically a URL. You need to set up one scheduled job, one cron job to run every minute, which accesses a single URL, not a per action URL, just a single URL provided by Joomla, which processes again the tasks queue. And just like the CLI cron jobs, you can also have a task specific URL that is called at a specific uh, date and time, but I also do not recommend this because then you're just going back to what we had before. Its problem is that you still need to set up a cron job with wget or curl, which has the, the drawbacks that we discussed before. Um, the most important drawback is that if you try to use a third party service, it's going to be absurdly expensive because you will be running this every minute of every hour of every day. So if your only option to run cron jobs is through a third party service like WebCron, uh, don't use this method. It, it will really suck for you. If you want to use this method, you just go to System Manage Schedule Tasks Options, the options for Joomla Schedule Tasks component. You go to the WebCron tab, enable it, click on Save. And magically, you see that underneath that, uh, that toggle, now there is the WebCron link um, text box, click on copy, and you get a URL. The URL will look something like 
this. It's a URL that's using COMAX. Um, then you just need to ask your host, hey, I want to run this every minute. How do I do it? And they should be able to help you. And that's it. You're done setting up Web Chrome. And then uh, you can set up your, your scheduled tasks. The final method that you can trigger schedule tasks in Joomla is called the lazy scheduler. In theory, you just flip a switch and tasks will execute automatically. Sounds great, right? Uh, yeah, well, tasks only execute when there is visitor traffic on your site, because remember what we said, a site cannot run until something else tells it to. This means that you don't know when things will run since you cannot predict your traffic. And also things are more likely to run when your site is busy. And this is the exact opposite of when you want to run your automation. Normally you want to do your automation when your server is just sitting there consuming electricity, doing nothing. Not when it's busy, basically the computer equivalent of setting bullets trying to serve as many pages as it can to all the, those visitors that have descended upon it. It is also not going to run with some caching setups like CDNs or caching proxies, uh, which might serve a page without hitting your server. Because remember, if a request doesn't come through to your server, then your site doesn't know that it has to do anything. Um, and the final, and for me, it's the most important problem is that you can only use it for tasks which are basically not demanding. If you have something that needs to run for a long time and requires data consistency or is very time sensitive, this is not gonna work. You cannot have data consistency when you're triggering your automation, when you have a lot of visitors modifying things on your site. You cannot run things which are time sensitive when uh, the execution of that thing depends on when when and whether you have visitors on the site right so even if you're trying to just send newsletters this method won't really work for you very well for very simple sites where you can use the lazy scheduler you can do that from the task scheduler options you just go to the lazy scheduling lazy scheduler tab and set the uh, option to enabled there is an option there which is the request interval which is how often joomla will check for tasks using the lazy scheduler the default is every five minutes if you're trying to do anything that is even remotely time sensitive set it to 30 instead then you click save and close and that's it if setting up a trigger looks a bit complicated, at least it's something that you need to only do once. You can add as many scheduled tasks as you want without needing to ever touch the trigger again. And if you're wondering, okay, there are three options, which one should I use? I have made a very simple flowchart. If you're afraid to ask your host anything, well, let the scheduling, there's nothing else you can do. If you can ask your host, first ask them, do you support cron jobs? If they say, yeah, use the CLI cron job. If they say no, but we support uh, URLs for scheduling, then you can use the web cron URL. If they say, well, uh, our uh, hosting service is stuck in the stone ages and we do not have any kind of uh, scheduling enabled for you, then you have to use lazy scheduling and immediately start looking for a new host. Yeah, well, it's 2023, but there are some servers, some hosting companies which seem to believe that we're still in the 80s. No, wait, in the 80s, they already had cron jobs. In the 60s, yeah, uh, scheduled tasks in computers appeared between 1968 and 1970, right? So, setting up the tasks, actually telling Joomla to do something useful. Uh, 
as my five-year-old says, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. So let's see how can we schedule the tasks in two easy steps. First, you make sure that the plugin in the task group is published. This is what provides the code and the configuration interface. Then you go to schedule tasks and set up a task. Sounds pretty easy. Let's see an example. Let's remove unnecessary users with Admin Tools Professional. That was the first uh, scheduled task I implemented for Joomla 4 back when it was still in beta 2, uh, just to see if this uh, new thing really worked. So you just uh, go to the plugins, make sure that Task Admin Tools is enabled. Yep, OK, perfect. And go to Schedule Tasks. And you click on that new button that's up there in the toolbar. You select the uh, task type, in our case, admin tools, delete and active users. And now you can configure it. This is the configuration page for, for a task. The top part, the basic fields, is handled by Joomla. It tells Joomla when to execute this task. And I have chosen it, chosen to execute this task every three days at uh, 30 minutes past midnight UTC, which is 1.30 a.m. In, uh, in your time zone, guys. The bottom part, task parameters, is what the plugin controls. So my plugin has two options. Uh, when do you want me to delete inactive users? Only if they haven't activated their account. Delete how, uh, after how many days? After seven days. So this task will delete all the users who have created an account for at, le at least seven days old, but they still haven't activated it, which probably means that there were spam bots. And then I click on save and close, and that's it. We have the task here. If you want to make sure that it runs and it's not something that takes a long time like a backup, you can click on run test and after a while Joomla will tell you yep it worked or no here's an error that I that I have and that's it easy right it's simple it's Joomla so second example take backups with Akiba Backup Professional this is where we get a bit more serious again make sure that it's plugin task Akiba Backup is published no problem Go to the schedule task, click on new, and select the task type, Akiba Backup, take a backup. So here I'm using a more advanced configuration for Joomla. For the execution rule, I, I choose Chrome expression, advanced, sounds scary. It's not. Uh, it's just a bunch of multi-select fields. I selected... Uh, the minute and hour to execute, it doesn't show here, but it was uh, scheduled for 1.30 in the morning of all days of the month, all months, whatever day of the week. That's it. And then I, uh, the only option that I have uh, for, my pal for my plugin is which backup profile to use. On this site, I only had one backup profile like most sites out there. So that's it. Save and close. And we have it. Another example, without using my software, just for a change, uh, there is a nice plugin that's called Kicktem. Uh, I believe it's made by uh, someone in Germany. This plugin automatically archives old articles. So I installed that plugin and made sure it's enabled, the Kick Manage article. Again, go to Schedule Task, click on New, Select the type, kick manager article. And now I told it every day at three in the morning, I want you to find all articles in the blog category, which have been created more than six months ago and move them into the archives category. Nice. So now I don't have to every so often go to my site and move articles around. Splendid. Now, something even better, because we said sky's the limit, right? 
I, I promised that in the beginning. You can trigger the cron URLs of any component or any external service, which means that you can pretty much do everything, right? Joomla has that feature. First, you need to find the cron URL of the component. Uh, I'm just using a, a dummy URL here just for an example, but for a more practical example, you might want to take a look at uh, perhaps as emailing and its URL to send the newsletter. Then you need to set up a scheduled task with uh, the, the type that's uh, a very not user-friendly called get request. I mean, if someone told you what does get request do, you'll be like, uh, I have no idea. But it is used to access a URL. So make sure that the plugin is enabled, the task request. Again, go to schedule task, click on new, select the type, get request. I really hate that name, by the way, in case you didn't know by now. And here, in the request URL field, we can enter the URL of our component. Request timeout is how long, how many seconds to wait before we call it quits, before we say, okay, it doesn't work. Um, if you have a third party service which needs to send some kind of authorization header, then you can just set authorization enabled and enter that information. Save and close and you have automated something which doesn't nominally support Joomla scheduled tasks. And very importantly, it works with third party services. And if you have ever used any kind of automation service that can pull data from a lot of sources and interact with your site, this is going to be very useful for you. I'm pretty sure that those of you who have built sites like that know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is it for scheduled tasks, really. I think I did a speed run of this presentation since I have presented quite a few times already. Um, there is a short URL where you can find the, the presentation and download all the, all the slides because I'm pretty sure you will need to go back and reference them. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them since we apparently have a lot of time. Don't be shy. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for having me there. And hopefully next year I will be able to be there in person. What's that? I, I, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs>